because the devil is out there trying to steal the word from you. That's why he will attack you. The moment you try to study the word of God, the moment you try to get in the word of God, the devil is after that word because he don't want that thing in your heart. All right, so now watch this. Those who fall under this one, these are a lot of people today who call themselves Christians. Because guess what? These people, they're, they're believing, that they already believe, they believe the word, but it says for a while, for a while they were excited until the temptations came. <laughs> everyone to you. I am Nathan Softer. I am so happy and blessed that you have taken time out of your busy schedule to connect with us here at Fuel Station Church. We are super honored and blessed that you are here with us learning the Word of God, and I am here with our amazing virtual church right here, and we are just so excited. So listen, we have been in a powerful series entitled Christians or Disciples, or Disciples or Christians, and today we are going to go into episode nine. If you have not had a chance to like and subscribe to our channel, we do ask you to do so at this time. All right, Jesus Disciples um, Virtual Church, we are going to bring your attention to, and for those of you, you can follow on the screen to Luke chapter 8. In today's teaching, what we want to highlight in, in, in today is how the disciples, they actually get mysteries spoken to them. They are the ones who get the understanding. Um, Jesus is going to show us in this parable, um, in this passage of scripture on how sometimes Jesus will only give certain information to those who are his disciples. OK, so for the uh, for this whole series, we've been highlighting the fact that uh, there is a difference that every disciple is automatically a Christian, but every Christian is not automatically a disciple. We have been talking about how so many people call themselves Christian, but when you see their life, when you when they don't really connect with their Lord, they don't really want to identify with Christ in any other way. However, they call themselves a Christian. And I keep referring to when my wife first came here to the United States and how she said how everybody called themselves a Christian. And I I remember I would never forget those words because it is true. And I, I think because I'm from this country, I never really paid too much attention to it because, yes, here. In our country, United States, it is, uh, you know, Christian is considered a religion. And so really, you know, if, it's the easiest thing to say, <laughs> you know. And so um, but when you really start studying the, the Bible, you're going to see that Jesus really referred to his followers as disciples. And that's really what we are. So in today's teaching, we're going to look at um, how Jesus treats those who are true disciples. OK, so in Luke chapter eight, we're going to start at verse four. And I'm going to ask you to go to your Bibles and those at virtual church. You can read along with me as well. So it starts, it says this in verse four of Luke chapter eight. It says, and when much people were gathered together and were come to him out of every city, he spake by a parable. Notice it says when much people. So underline much people. Verse five, a sower went out to sow his seed. And as he sowed, some fell by some fell by the wayside and it was trodden down and the fowls of the air devoured it. Verse six, and some fell upon a rock and as soon as it was sprung up, it withered away because it lacked moisture. Verse seven, and some fell among thorns and the thorns sprang up with it and choked it. Verse eight, and others fell on good ground and sprang up and bare fruit and hundredfold. And when he said these things, he cried, he that hath ears to hear, let him hear. Now look what happens in verse nine. Verse nine, his disciples asked him, not everybody else, but his disciples asked him saying, what might this parable be? Verse 10, he said unto you, unto you, the disciples, it is given to know the mysteries of the kingdom of God, but to others, religious people, the multitude is going to be in parables that seeing they might not see and hearing they may not understand. Verse 11, now the parable is this, the seed is the word of God. Verse 12, those by the wayside are they that bear, that they that hear, then cometh the devil, taketh away the word out of their hearts, lest they should believe and be saved. Verse 13, 
they on the rock are they which when they hear receive the word with joy and these have no root for and which for a while they believe and in time of temptation they fall away verse 14 and they which fell among thorns are they which when they have heard go forth and are choked with the cares and riches and pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to uh, perfection verse 15 but that but those that are on the good ground are they which in a honest and good heart having heard the word kept it and bring forth fruit with patience so you see here that what christ was bringing on this he started off he brought um this multitude gathered and when jesus saw the multitude he began to speak in a parable he didn't you notice in this passage he didn't just pretty much go out and start giving them the deep things so most people think when you see big crowds and everything that jesus wants to just reveal all of the mysteries of the kingdom and notice what happened jesus said on purpose he says listen I speak to them in parables because hearing they hear not, you know, they have ears, but they don't know how to hear. They, they have eyes, but they don't know how to see. He was pretty much saying, I am not about to give the mysteries of the kingdom to the masses or to the multitude because they're not going to understand it. But then he says something, he says, but to you, to you. And now we're talking about the disciples. He wants the disciples to understand his heart, his mind. He wants pretty much everybody to understand it. But the people who get it is going to be his disciples. So here, what we're going to see is that you have people who got, came around Jesus. So this is what uh, religious people will do. They'll go to church. They'll be around the things of God. But when it comes to the deep things of God, they don't really, their ears are not ready to receive that. But the disciples want to know more. The disciples ain't comfortable with parables. I don't know about y'all. And I don't know about any of y'all on virtual church. I'm not comfortable um, just hearing something, but I don't understand. And is anybody, um, uh, with me on that? Do you, do you like studying something, but then you don't have an understanding of it? To me, that's frustrating. So what I do is when I read something, if I study something, or if I, if I look at something, I will ask the Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, show me, what are you trying to say? Because I got to get understanding of what he's saying in order for it to produce some fruit in my life. Now it's about to get good here because I want you to see what he says here, let's look in verse number 10. Um, he says, unto you it is given to know the mysteries. There's mysteries that he wants to reveal to those who's close to him of the kingdom of God. The kingdom of God is, is righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. He says, I'm going to give you some mysteries. But again, I can't entrust these mysteries with everybody. Now, there is a scripture in John that says, he that loves me, he says, I will come and make my abode in him. I believe that's in John chapter 14. So he's pretty much saying, if a person really loved me, if the person really give me their heart, he says, I'm going to come to that person and I'm going to make my house there. I'm going to abide there with him. He didn't say, I'm just going to go abide with everybody. And this is what we got to understand. Because I think so many people, well, I go to church. I pay my tithe. So, hey, I'm good. But Okay, wait a minute. But there's some things that you are not getting until you become a true disciple. And remember, a true disciple is a follower, a learner, and a student. They are not just a person who's caught up and just comfortable going to things on special days of the year. They want to follow Christ every day. They are in his word every day. They are talking to him every day. They need him every day. They realize that they can do nothing without him. They, disciples are dependent on their teacher. They're dependent on their master. That's what makes a disciple different from just a person who calls themselves a Christian. Because a Christian, they not dependent. When I, let, me, let, me, let me make sure I say this right, because I don't want um, a person who's here in the series saying, you know, or ashamed to call yourself a Christian. I'm not saying don't be, a, don't be ashamed to call yourself a Christian. I'm just saying just make sure you are a disciple under that name. Because if you're saying Christian, but you're not really following the master, trust me, having the name is not good enough, Okay. So here, when he says it is up to it is to you, the disciples, to know the mystery. So what are some of the mysteries? The mystery is the understanding of what he says. So it's clear, guys, that in verse four, he is saying something. He's talking. He's speaking. But he spoke in a way that people heard him, but they don't have understanding. This is what happens in the in, in majority of the churches today. People are hearing they're constantly, they read a scripture, but then they say, I don't know what this means. And guess what? If that's why we need the Holy Spirit, who will 
teach us and guide us and, and lead us into all truth. He's the one that would say, you look at this scripture and he will open up the scriptures to his disciples because you took time out of your busy schedule with the word of God and say, OK, what does. And I think we were doing some teachings and we were talking about um, many scriptures. We've done teachings on all kind of scriptures. And sometimes, again, we get stuck at you can get stuck at a word and say, God, what do you mean by this? What does this scripture really mean? And guess what? If you are a disciple, your master will say, I can get, I'm going to give you the mystery to this thing because you're one of mine. You're not just following me by name. <laughs> All right. So I really want you to understand that there's mysteries for the true disciples. Now, this is the, my, one of my favorite parts of the story, because right here, he is pretty much telling in this parable the kind of people that comes around. So he's using um, a parable about the seeds and the sower. So he says a sower went by. And he sowed seeds. And then he says, some fell about, some fell here, some fell among doors, the wayside, some fell on good ground, and some fell on stony ground. So there's four sets of hearts, four sets of people that get the seed. All right. The seed is the word of God. So what's happening is he's the sower, which is which is, which he breaks it down. He's the one who's he's spreading the word. The seed is the word of God. He's gonna break it down here. And he says, but the only problem is. There's four type of people that these seeds fall on. I don't know which one y'all 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 fall under, but um, I'm 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 by faith. I'm, I'm mine's is I'm number I'm the good ground. I, I, you can put in your chat. I'm the good ground <laughs> because you don't want to be the other ones. <laughs> All right, so let's look at the three. Let's look at the other ones because remember this: it's the Word of God. Many people got the Bible. Many many people got Bible apps. They got softwares. They got all type of stuff that they can get the seed, but it's the heart that the seed falls on. So let's look at um, the, the uh, yeah, I see the chats. I see it. Good, good. Uh, she said, I'm the good ground. I hear you. So let's look at, let's look at what the scripture says here. So let's go now as he breaks it down. Let's go to verse um, 11. He says, now the parable is this. Now he's about to tell his disciples the parable. The disciples ask. So real quick, guys, disciples ask questions. Disciples ask questions. Make sure you put that in the chat. Disciples will ask questions. So as of today, if you are truly one of his disciples, you're not just going to read the Bible. You're going to read the Bible and then ask the scriptures questions. What is it that you're saying, God? So the Bible, the, so the disciples is going to ask questions because they really want to know the heart of their master. All right. So let's go to verse. Seven. So now the parable is this. The seed is the word of God. So it's clear what the seed is. This is Christ opening up the understanding. He's giving understanding. The seed that was sown is the word of God in that parable. Now look at verse 12. Those by the wayside, meaning this is a group of people, by the wayside, these are those that hear it. They hear the word. They hear the word that was sown. But then the devil come and take it away out of their hearts, lest they believe and be saved. These are the individuals who've been hearing Jesus is coming. Give your life to Christ. Um, you need to go to church. You need to get saved. And these are the individuals who hear about the things of God. They go to church again. They're, they're, they're committed to Easter, Christmas and, and certain, um, certain, um, or Christmas or, or certain, um, holidays. But watch this. But they never believed and got saved because the devil snatched it out of their heart. So they've been around the word. They've been around the seed, but they never became a believer. All right, that's the group number one, and I don't believe any of you, and I don't believe any of you falls under that category, all right? Let's go to category number two. So he says in verse 13, they that are on the rocks are they, when they hear the word, they receive the word with joy, meaning, oh, that was a good word, pastor. You preached, you preached good. Now watch this. And they, but the only problem is they don't have no roots. <laughs> For a while they believe, watch this, guys, and in time of temptation, they fall away. Mm -mm -mm. So that means they started off excited. They started off ex happy. They started off saying, oh, that was a good word. Oh, my God, they're starting off good. But guess what? Temptation started to come. And guess what? The, because they didn't have enough root in their faith in God, the enemy tempted them and pulled them away. So that's ground number two. And I pray none of you guys are ground number two. And I pray none of you guys in virtual church is ground number two because the devil is snatching some un unrooted people. He's, he's snatching people who don't have deep roots completely out of the out of the faith right now. 
And I don't know about you, but disciples need to get on their knees. Disciples need to get closer to their master because the devil is out there trying to steal the word from you. That's why he will attack you. The moment you try to study the word of God, the moment you try to get in the word of God, the devil is after that word because he don't want that thing in your heart. All right. So now watch this. Those who fall under this one. These are a lot of people today who call themselves Christians. Because guess what? These people, they're they're believing that they already believe they believe the word. But it says for a while. For a while, they were excited until the temptations came because they didn't have enough root. All right. Because they only pray once a week. They only pray uh, maybe once a month. So they don't have enough root. They don't have enough foundation. And guess what? When the temptations come, they get pulled up because they was not a disciple. Disciples don't wait once a week. Disciples meet every day. I always remember that. Now, let's go to the third one. Now, the third one, I'm admit the third one. Many people fall in the third one. OK, many people who's who's on borderline disciples, who's making that transition. A lot of them fall on here. So on virtual church. We go pray that you're not the third one. And I pray that I've never fallen on the third one. I've already claimed that I'm the good ground. But let's look at the third one, guys, because this is where most of us fall in. The third one says here on uh, verse 14, and they that which fell among the thorns, these are the thorns, these are they that when they have heard, they go forth. So that means they got it in them and they went forth and got activated. Now watch this. But they are choked. Uh-oh. With the cares and the riches and the pleasures of this life and bring no fruit to perfection. Mm -mm -mm. So these are the people, they are saved. They go to church. They actually seek in their assignment. They're actually seeking their purpose. They're actually trying to um, get to know God a little better. But guess what? They got distracted. I wonder, is anybody a virtual church? Are you getting distracted? Is any? I pray that because this is where a lot of people is right now. And what you see in that scripture, it says that they bring forth no fruit to perfection, meaning fruit started to grow, but it ain't perfect fruit. It's not matured fruit because the devil got them distracted with cares of life. Oh, God, I got to pay these bills. I don't have time to pray. Oh my God, I'm, I'm, I'm stressed out from work. I'm stressed out with the family. I'm stressed out with this, that you don't have time to produce the fruit that you should. So watch this. A lot of people are okay being there, but disciples are not. Disciples says, no, I am pursuing good ground. Disciples are focused on good ground. Disciples are saying, listen, I'm not going to let my job distract me. I'm not going to let my family distract me. I'm not going to let my neighbors distract me. I'm not going to let my emotions distract me. I am going to make sure that I take that word that I heard and I'm going to put it in my heart because my master spoke it to me. He revealed the mysteries of the kingdom to me. All right. So many people falls under the, the one with the thorns. I remember I used to study the scripture all the time and I used to always say to myself, Man, I used to hear a good message on Sunday, and I remember by by Tuesday, somebody would ask me, what was the message? And because I was so distracted with, with man, I got to go to work, and I got to do this, and, and everything not going my way, I, I completely start for, stopped forgetting, started to forget, like, all the principles that was being taught. And guess what? Yes, I was saved. Yes, I was still um, go. you know, I, I knew that I belonged to God, but I did not see the fruit to perfection. All right, now let's go to the last one. This is the one that the disciples are. So the last one here is 15, verse 15. But that on the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, watch this, having heard the word, they kept it and they brought forth fruit with patience. Underline the word patience. Because disciples understand that to produce the fruit that the master want to produce, it ain't going to happen overnight. And we had some, um, somebody amazing in a virtual church talking about patience. And it is the truth. Things, we keep wanting things to happen tomorrow. And God says, listen, I take time. Those trees that y'all see outside, they did not grow overnight. <laughs> they took time because the roots were going deep. And guess what? As the tree started to grow, it did not grow in one day. So a disciple understand, I'm not going to be um, everything God want me to be tomorrow. But guess what? Every day I'm staying close to my master. So I'm going to hear the word and I'm going to keep it. And I'm going to let the fruit do what it needs to do. I'm going to let the seed do what it needs to do. And guess what? I am going to be maturing because I'm following my master. I'm not going to worry about trying to be Mr. 
super saint tomorrow. All I got to do is stay obedient, stay connected to the vine, stay connected to my master, and I will be his disciple. And that is how this thing works. But you have so many people who just, oh, well, I'm, as long as I'm, I'm a Christian, I'm good. I, you know, I, you know, I, you know, I gave my tithes again. I'm good. I, I gave an offering last week, but I'm not doing none of this. I don't really need to hear the word. I really don't need to hear none of this stuff. I mean, I'm not, I'm, and, and isn't it funny, guys, that Jesus used in this parable? He's, he's talking about the word. He's talking, when he's talking about the seed, he's talking about the word. Notice he didn't mention nothing about music. He mentioned nothing about, um, um, you know, some of the things that we value. He didn't even mention that. He said the thing the devil is after is the seed. <laughs> he after the word because that is where your fruit is going to be produced in. And disciples know that because his disciples understand the way I'm connected to my master is listening to his teachings, listening to his heart, his word. So if the, if the music you're listening to, you should listen to music that got the word of God in it. That's kind of building your faith to get in the word because the word is what's going to make you understand the master's mind. And the, and the more we get closer to the Lord, the more we get to start understanding the mystery. So as of today, I'm going to encourage every last one of you as one of his disciples to, to when you study and when you read a word, read a scripture, ask God to open up the understanding to you. You will be shocked at the things that the Holy Spirit will show you if you gave him time to, to, for him to show you the mysteries of the kingdom of God. So I pray that you are blessed in today's teaching. I'm going to ask you at this time, and those of you at Virtual Church, if you could just close your, uh, bow your heads with me as I say this prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you so much, God, for your goodness and your mercy. Lord, I pray that every person who listened to this teaching on tonight, Father, I pray, God, that they will make up the decision that they will be a disciple. They will not just walk around it with a religious spirit, but Father, that they will truly be a true disciple, a true follower of you, somebody who is totally going to say yes to your will, somebody who's totally going to walk with, at the places that you say go to, somebody who's going who's gonna to submit completely to your leadership. Father, help us to be the true disciples. Help us not to be, Lord God, the, the, the one, Lord God, whose heart is stony, whose heart is full, it's like the thorns or, or by the wayside, but help us to be the good ground so we can yield the fruit and be your disciples and bring you glory. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. And if you are watching, if you don't know who Jesus Christ is, I am here to encourage you to please give your life to Jesus Christ. He loves you so much. He is soon to come back. We say here at Fuel Station Church all the time, we have a, ex, a, a, a visible expiration date. That means pretty soon, each and every one of us is going to transition from this life to life eternity, uh, eternal. And our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, is the only way he is the truth and the life to eternal life. So listen, if you want to give your life to Jesus Christ, I'm going to ask you to repeat after me at this time. Say, Lord Jesus, come into my heart. I repent of my sins. I confess with my mouth and I believe in my heart that you died and rose on the third day. Lord, change my heart. I repent of all my sins. And as of today, I ask you to be my Lord and Savior. In Jesus' name, amen. Listen, if that is you, the angels in heaven are rejoicing and we are rejoicing here at Fuel Station Church and here at Virtual Church. Listen, we thank you so much for connecting with us. We pray that this teaching was a blessing to you. Please go back and listen to the other teachings if you had not had a chance to. And we are so looking forward to see you on next week. In Jesus' name, God bless you. Let's give God a hand. Praise here.